how to prepare a sample for GPC SEC analysis. GPC SEC is a type of liquid chromatography, which means that a liquid mobile phase is used to move the sample through the system. As such, the technique requires that the sample be completely dissolved into a solution prior to injection. Insoluble portions of the sample will be removed from solution one way or another and will not be analyzed. At best, these insoluble materials will be removed prior to injection. At worst, they'll get stuck in expensive system components such as the columns or detectors. If you inject a bad sample into the system, you can expect to get bad results back out. The three most important factors for generating good data are sample prep, sample prep, and sample prep. This video will demonstrate how to prepare a sample for GPC SCC analysis to maximize data accuracy and system health. In addition to ensuring sample solution homogeneity, considerations such as sample concentration and stability will be discussed. A common list of supplies for sample preparation includes a scintillation vial, a balance, a method of dispensing a known volume of dissolution solvent, a way to introduce gentle agitation to facilitate dissolution, a lure lock syringe, and a syringe filter. While the preparation method described here is applicable for both manual injector and auto sampler systems, this demonstration will place the final sample solution into an auto sampler vial. The first step is to weigh the sample into the scintillation vial. This way, if complete dissolution occurs, the concentration of the sample will be known. Knowledge of the sample's concentration allows you to calculate the sample's DNDC value, which ensures accurate data calculation and obtain additional information such as percent recovery. Typical sample concentrations range from 1 to 5 mg per milliliter depending on the sample type, so make sure an appropriate amount of sample is weighed out to meet the desired sample concentration. The second step is to dilute the sample with the dissolution solvent. The dissolution solvent is often the same as the mobile phase and can be drawn directly from the mobile phase reservoir. This will help minimize solvent mismatch peaks in the chromatograms. In some cases, the dissolution solvent is different than the mobile phase. That's okay as long as the sample will remain in solution in the mobile phase once the dissolution solvent has been separated away. Since the mass of sample is known, it is important to use a pipette or other graduated liquid dispenser to add a specific volume of dissolution solvent so that the exact concentration of sample in solution can be determined. For instance, if 40 milligrams of sample was weighed out, then using 10 milliliters of dissolution solvent would produce a sample solution with a concentration of 4 milligrams per milliliter. Let the amount of sample available and desired concentration dictate how much dissolution solvent to use. Gently dispense the dissolution solvent into the scintillation vial containing the sample and secure the cap. Third, apply the gentlest conditions possible to facilitate complete dissolution of the sample. This can be done by simply letting the sample solution sit on the bench at ambient temperature or applying gentle agitation with a shaker, rocker, or rotator. A stir bar or vortex are not ideal options but can be used if the sample is stable enough to maintain its integrity throughout the process. Temperature is another way to encourage dissolution. If heat is applied to a sample, it is recommended to use the minimum temperature and time required and to combine it with gentle agitation in an effort to minimize any potential sample change or degradation. It is also important to check that the sample will remain in solution when cooled down to either ambient temperature or the temperature of the auto sampler columns and detectors. Let the sample dissolve for an adequate amount of time. A good rule is to wait an extra hour after it appears to have completely dissolved. Periodically examine the sample solution to make sure the sample is not stuck to the side of the vial or has begun to gel instead of dissolve. Now that you have a homogeneous sample solution, the last step is to filter it. It is important to use a syringe and a syringe filter that are compatible with your sample solution. For example, do not use a syringe with a rubber-tipped plunger when working with organic solvents. Regarding the filters, we recommend filtering all sample solutions through a syringe filter with 0.2 micrometer pores. These syringe filters are available with nylon membranes for general aqueous sample solutions, PTFE membranes for organic sample solutions, and cellulose acetate membranes for aqueous protein solutions. 
If you are using an auto sampler, you can filter directly into auto sampler vials. This will remove any insoluble material or other particulates that can damage the instrument, column, and detectors. So to recap, weigh out your sample, dilute your sample to a known concentration, allow your sample to completely dissolve under appropriate conditions, and filter your sample solution through a 0.2 micrometer syringe filter. Your sample is now ready to be injected into your GPC-SEC system. Good results are on their way. Music